In this video, we will demonstrate how to create a virtual requirements document. In the requirements tool, you may have listed multiple requirements. You can view them, you can click in and read the requirements in their entirety, as well as any discussions that went on around a particular item. But this doesn't let me see my whole requirements document in full like you would in Microsoft Word. With Lighthouse's reporting engine, you can create a virtual requirements document that includes any information you need. As we zoom in, you can see we've created a set of filters that allow us to narrow the search results for this particular document to just our project management requirements as well as just those requirements that are slated for our Vancouver release. As we scroll down, we see a well-formed table that includes the requirements number, a description, and you can see in the description field we have formatting preserved as well as images that have been embedded into this document. We can zoom in on the requirement number, which is clickable. So you can click right into the document. And as we scroll over to one of the other fields in our report, we can see the resource who has been assigned to this requirement, as well as its status in the overall life cycle. This particular document doesn't exist by itself. It is a virtual document created from your own database. Let's take a closer look at how this requirements document was constructed. As we enter our report editor, we can see that this is a tabular report. And we can also see that there has been criteria defined to narrow the results of our report. As we zoom in, we see requirement release has been pre-designated. And our requirements module or folder, we've given the reporter the ability to select at runtime which set of requirements they'd like to include. As we scroll down in our editor, we see the fields of data that make up our report. We can sort a particular field. And you'll also notice that these data elements have a little chain link that is bonding them together. This will ensure that each of the data elements is related to the one adjacent to it. Now that we've seen how this report is constructed, let's go ahead and build it ourselves. First, as always, we give our report a title. We select the report type. It's default to tabular report. And now we're going to enter our report criteria. Remember, these are the data elements that allow us to narrow our report results. So we, as we zoom in, we're going to grab the release data element and drag that into the box. And remember, we pre-selected a release for this report. So we're going to go into our release database and select Vancouver. We also want to add a second filter, which is module. And again, that's the folder that groups requirements together. So these are all the requirements that might be related to any particular part of our software project. Now we're ready to actually create the report. We want to get the requirement ID number included in the report. We also want the statement or description. We're going to include 
the resource that is assigned to the particular requirement, as well as its lifecycle status. We're going to make sure that these data elements are linked together and that we're going to sort by the number field. Finally, we want to give each one of our columns a heading and we can customize that heading. As you see, it's dragged over. It automatically assumes the heading of the data element below it, but you're free to change that to whatever description you'd like. Now it's time to preview our report and make sure it's working correctly. So in our report preview, we'll select our project, select the module or folder that includes the requirements we want to have in our report, and then click Execute. And here we see a well-formed requirements report, complete with images, formatted text, and all of the data fields that we included in our report editor. With everything looking good, we're going to go ahead and close our preview window. Now we're ready to permanently save the report. As with all reports, you have the ability to determine which users can access a report. Once saved, the report is now ready for its final run. Again, we're going to select the group of requirements we want to include in this report. And there we have it. As with all reports, you can export them to various formats. Thanks very much for tuning in.